over the past uh, few weeks, I've become aware from different conversations that I've had um, with a whole variety of people of the number of uh, ministers who have been really struggling in their ministry, but also that it's not just ministers who are struggling. Everyone is really busy. They've got far too much to do. Folk are struggling with illness. Everybody has difficulties to face. So I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about what we can do to find help in uh, difficult times. And I think that what we think matters, and matters much more than we um, really give it credit for. It matters more than we can imagine. You see, I, I think our thoughts and our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts, whether we're aware of it or not. If your thoughts are full of faith, full of God's truth, then you're more likely to become more like Christ. But if your thoughts are negative and toxic, if they're polluted, then you're not going to be living in victory and in the blessing that God has for you. In our reading today, Romans chapter 5, verses 5 and 6, it says this, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. What we think really matters. It's really important. Our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our inner, uh, our inner dialogue matters. Uh, I don't know how many of you talk to yourselves. I suspect that says it all. Um, most of us, most of us have conversations with ourselves because you know we need really good advice uh, and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes my inner dialogue, I know, would please God, because I'm thinking about Him, or I'm thinking about what He's called me to do. I'm thinking how I can serve. I'm reading His Word and so on, uh, and responding to it. But other times. It's not like that at all. It's actually negative and destructive because it's focused on me. And that's when the selfish, negative thoughts appear. I don't know if that makes sense to you, if it resonates with you at all. I want to give you a couple of scenarios to help you think about it. Is your life, uh, your thought life, is it, would you say it's more God-centered uh, or it's more self-centered? When you wake up, is the common direction of your thinking during the day, ho oh, ho, God is with me. It's a beautiful day. Um, my life really matters. I've got a great calling. I'm full of faith. My mind is full of life and peace. God is good. I've got divine energy to do anything through Him who strengthens me. I'm really excited about today and I'm going to make a difference for God today. Or is it more kind of, whose child is that pulling at the blankets? Where is my coffee? Uh, why am I even up at this time of the day? I've got to go to work and I hate it. It's blooming awful. I've got far too much to do. I'm never going to get it done. I'm exaggerating slightly on both sides. But you get the point. What, what direction is your thinking going? I want to make a statement and then I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to think about this statement. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And the question is, are you excited about the direction your thoughts are taking you? If your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts, are you excited? about that direction. As I was preparing for today and thinking about these verses, I was thinking about how I respond and what I think. And, and, and Actually, I didn't like it very much, to be quite honest. What, what I find is that I, I so often say to myself, I've got too much to do. I'm never going to get it done. I can't meet everyone's expectations. And sometimes... Not very often, 
But sometimes it makes me wonder if I'm doing the right thing. What I recognized is that I need God to help me to change my thinking. And I don't, I'm not just talking about thinking positive things and everything will be wonderful. I don't believe that. Um, I think positive thinking can help uh, to, to an extent. What I'm talking about is having your life transformed by God, by thinking about Him and focusing on Him. I think regardless of how positively you think about life, there will still be difficulties and still be struggles that we have to face and that we have to deal with. But if God can change my thinking, then it could change everything and change so much about me. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let God transform you into a new person by giving you lots of money, by making you even more handsome, by blessing you with a Ferrari. No. By changing the way you think. What I love about that is it's not me changing me. It's not me working harder or doing more. This is God changing me by renewing my mind, by stopping the negative lies and replacing them with God's truth. This isn't me working harder or having to put in more effort. This is me working to align my thoughts with God's thoughts. And when I think God's thoughts, He transforms me. Let God change you into a new person by changing the way you think. Because like it or not, so much of life isn't about what happens to you but it's about how you think about what happens to you. We're all different. We all react differently to circumstances that we face where one person will surrender, another will flourish. Some of that has to do with our personality. But so much of it has to do with the way we think about it. When you're under attack and you believe the lies that the devil tells, you hear in your head, I'm rubbish. I'm hopeless. I'm worthless. I can't do that. Whatever it is. But you can turn and you can seek God's help in that time. Because what you think matters. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every, sorry, captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I love the way Paul kind of unpacks all that. I've got spiritual weapons that have spiritual power. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. We fight with prayer. We fight with fasting. We fight with tithing. We fight with the Word of God. We've got the sword of the Spirit. We've got the breastplate of righteousness. We've got the shield of faith. We've got the helmet of salvation. We've got the belt of truth and the shoes of the gospel of peace. We don't have normal weapons, but our weapons are powerful because they come from God. They demolish what Paul calls here strongholds. And that uh, Greek word is translated uh, from the word, uh, apologies to any Greek scholars, uh, okimura. This word is, if you can imagine, a castle with a dungeon. And beyond that, you have a prisoner who is locked in, but locked in by deception. That's the stronghold. They're locked in by something that's not real. They've been deceived and they're stuck in that place. It's a wrong mindset or a spiritual trap. And I think that's where some of us are. Satan's got us convinced that we can't, we won't, we never will, we're not good enough, we don't know enough. He's got us convinced so we don't have faith to reach out and to 
to grab for God and to take the things that God has for us because we're caught in this trap of the devil's lies. But the good news is that the text also says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. How? By taking captive the thoughts and making them obedient to Christ. I love the way the New Living Translation illustrates this verse. Um, it says there, we capture the rebellious thoughts and we teach them to obey Christ. It's like when the thought comes into your head, you go, right, okay, sit there. No, no, this is what the Bible says. This is what God, sit there. You haven't learned yet. Make it obedient to Christ. Here's where I need you to work with me. A little bit. I'm going to ask you another two questions. And that's what the paper's for this time, because I'd like you to write this question down. So if you've got your pen and your bit of paper, it, it will come up. Um, the first question is this. What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking? What negative thoughts are dominating your thinking? So what is it that the devil uses to try and trap you and to try and get you uh, and to, to hold you down. What are the negative thoughts that you have? I'm going to give you some ideas just while you're thinking about it. Just so that you know kind of what I'm talking about. And it is the, I can't get it all done. I'm not a good enough parent. <laughs> she brought homemade scones and I went to the shop. Hashtag I suck. <laughs> Do you know that kind of stuff? I'm always going to battle with this and I'm never going to win. I'm too inconsistent. I'm on again, off again with God. I'm undisciplined. I'm never going to learn to pray properly. I'm always going to struggle with my weight. I'm just not good enough with people. I'm an average student. I just couldn't tell anyone about Jesus. All of these things that float around in our heads and in our lives that are lies that come from the devil. So whatever it is, think about it honestly. What is it in your head that the devil uses? to keep you down? What is it that you're consistently telling yourself over and over again? Because that's the direction that he wants to take your life and it's wrong. So what is that thing? Take a moment and write it down. And maybe you're wondering why I'm asking you to write it down. Well, there are two reasons for that. The first is that right here and right now, there's a spiritual battle going on. Right now, in this building, there is a spiritual battle going on. When we begin to understand that there are strongholds that the devil has on our life, then we can begin to do something about it. And at that point, the devil has no option because Christ has already won the victory. And so he will do whatever he can to prevent you from thinking about it. He'll do whatever he can to prevent you from working out that he is a liar. There's a battle going on right now. So writing it down is part of that battle and part of the victory. This is what I need to struggle with. This is what I need to take to God. This is where I need to go. Writing it down is part of that battle. But also, the second thing is, it simply helps you to remember. It helps you to remember what you need to take to God. So, if there are things in your life where you are conscious that you have been consistently negative, what do we do about that? How do we demolish the strongholds? Well, that's the second question. The second question is this. What spiritual truth will demolish the strongholds in your life? What spiritual truth will demolish the strongholds in your life? What spiritual truth can we learn that will demolish those unhelpful, ungodly thoughts? And maybe if you're new to church or if you're a new follower of Jesus, you might need some help with this. So you can ask somebody that you know uh, in the congregation um, or at the end of the service, there'll be uh, a couple of folks here who will um, be able to help you and, and just talk through uh, some of that uh, with you. Or, um, or as well, even, 
I would recommend that maybe you uh, get involved in one of the home groups that there are in the church because there you can learn more uh, about God's Word and you can talk to people who uh, maybe are a bit further on in their journey uh, with God and learn from them. As part of Path of Renewal, uh, the group is starting to look at spiritual disciplines. That is essentially learning the habits of, uh, and rhythms of prayer and study that help us to become more like Jesus. So what I want to uh, encourage you to do is to seek God first every day. And I know when I say that, I can see the looks of, here we go again. Right? Because I say it quite often. B but I say it quite often because it's really important. It's really important. We need to spend time with God every single day. Because if our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts, we need to think about God so that we move towards Him. If you spend time with Him and you pray even just for a few minutes every day, if you read His Word and if you think about it and, and ask Him, how does that apply to me in my, in my circumstance, in my situation? And allow Him to speak Allow him to transform you. I'm going to give you some suggestions just so that you understand what it is I mean. Maybe you're somebody who, who constantly worries. You're just always worried about everything. Your statement might be, because of Christ, I'm not anxious about anything. I cast my cares on God because he cares for me. And you declare each day that statement. Because of Christ, I'm not anxious about anything. I cast my cares on God because He cares for me. And you know what? See, when you do it the first few times, you'll feel stupid. That's the truth. It will feel silly. And you might even think to yourself, I don't believe that. But it's about transforming your thinking. Maybe you don't know God's will for your life and you'd actually quite like to know. And every day you say this, my life belongs to God. I will seek him every day and every day he directs my steps. I'm learning to know his voice and he leads me to his perfect will. Maybe you like confidence and so every single day you're going to say this, my confidence is in Christ and in Christ alone. Because his spirit lives within me, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Maybe you're inconsistent in your time with God and you're going to say this. And as I said, it might not feel true at first, but if you keep saying it until it becomes true. I love the living and dwelling presence of my good God. Praying is as important to me as breathing. God's word nourishes my soul. I depend on his presence every moment of every day. And it may seem silly at first, but if you say it over and over and over again, you begin to change your strongest thoughts. And as you do that, he changes you. A kind of silly illustration for it is, I have O-grade French. I'm very proud of my O-grade French. Until I go to France. Because when, when, when you go, I, I'm the kind of person who, when we go to Portugal, I just add an O at the end of every word. Because I think somehow that should help. Right? So I go to France, and I, I, I drag out from the depths of my memory some French word, uh, and I, I try and speak. And it's, it's always a disaster. Right? Partly because I'm having to think in English and translate it into French and try and speak it and remember sort of vaguely some sort of pronunciation. And then this person comes back with blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I've kind of vaguely lost anyway. But then I'm also trying to have to translate it back into, uh, from the French to the English to rethink what the... And uh, you got all of that toing and froing and toing and froing in your head. Actually, what I need is to learn enough to get to the point where it clicks and I begin to hear, not in English, but in French. I begin to speak in French and miss out that in-between step. And here's what I think will happen with us if we do this. We might think, I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. I can't get through the day, but Christ has given me everything I need. With him, I can do all things. And you begin to change the pattern and the circle of your thinking. The more you say it, the more you, you renew your mind. And one day that switch will take place. 
And instead of going straight to the negative, you go to the godly. Here's my struggle and the solution from God's truth for me. I find it hard to put God first. when, When you're preparing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, you end up preparing Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and then not taking time for me personally. And there's all sorts of other things that need to be done. I struggle with choosing the important over the urgent. And I often tell myself, I can't do enough at church, and I can't be the husband that I want to be at home. I, I'm just not really managing all of this. I can't get it all done. But in thinking through this, I wrote down, I'm not asking you to do something that I haven't done. I wrote down my words, and I simply want to share them with you as an example. I am a dearly loved child of God. I exist to serve and to glorify Jesus. My family are more important than my job. My calling is to love others and to nurture, equip, train, and empower God's people for service. I long for God's presence in my life and am blessed beyond measure because the Holy Spirit dwells within me. The King loves me and I love Him. If you haven't written down your responses, then just take a moment just now to do that. And then when you've done it, declare it and declare it and declare it again and again and again and again until it clicks. Until you begin to believe the truth of God in your life. That's why with all of my excitement and passion and spiritual enthusiasm, I would invite you, urge you, encourage you. If I could command you, I probably would do this. Do this. And see God make a difference in your life. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let God change us to be a new people by changing the way that we think, not locked in a closet by a lie, but set free by the truth. God's Word says you know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And when we declare the truth of God into our lives, It will transform us. Satan is the father of lies. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And the truth will set you free. Amen. We're going to sing um, a song as we close. And and if you're not... um, aware of, of the, the, the picture of fire. It, it seems a kind of really strange song as if we're trying to burn the place down. Um, actually, it's, uh, the fire here is a symbol that, that the, God's Word uses for the Holy Spirit who, who brings transformation and who brings renewal and who brings change uh, into our lives. So actually what we're doing as we sing this is asking for God to pour out His Holy Spirit into our lives and the lives of those we know and love. Send the fire today.